Coming up on today's show, we're also going to talk about brain aneurysms. It's not an easy task to treat them, but thanks to new technology at Baptist Health, treatment options are expanding. So we're happy to have Dr. D in. He's a neurologist at Baptist Health, and he's going to talk more about this. You hear about aneurysms mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah, and he's going to give us, you know, things to look out for and what they do at Baptist to actually treat right. them. So he's got a lot of great information. From the station that's on your side, this is Channel 7 News, Good Morning Arkansas. Welcome back to Good Morning Arkansas. Well, we all know treating a brain aneurysm isn't an easy task, but thanks to new technology at Baptist Health, treatment options are expanding. And joining us this morning is Dr. Sushrut Dharmadakari, a neurologist at Baptist Health. Once again, thanks so much for being here with us this morning. And let's start off by explaining for people at home what a brain aneurysm is. Sure. So a brain aneurysm is a balloon or a bubble that forms on the side of a blood vessel wall. A blood vessel is like a garden hose, and imagine it develops a a bubble on the mm -hmm. side. That essentially is what a brain aneurysm is in blood vessels going to any organ in the body. Brain aneurysms are more unique because they're in a closed cavity where the brain really is covered with in the skull. So any kind of uh, leakage there can be a major, major disaster. Yeah, and why is it? Why can it be disastrous? What happens if you have an aneurysm? So majority of brain aneurysms are identified where, uh, you know, incidentally, meaning you can develop an aneurysm, have it without any problems for years. But the major catastrophic ones are the ones that bleed or rupture. About one in three to one in four patients don't even make it to the hospital wow. if they bleed. And about one in three or one in four don't even leave the hospital. So it has about a 50% mortality rate from ruptured brain aneurysms. But you guys have a new technology that you're working with to help people that do have an aneurysm. So let's talk about that. Sure. So. Uh, Initially, you know, the gold standard treatment for aneurysms used to be open surgery and clipping. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, what has evolved is a new technology called the woven endobridge or the web device. Uh, it's a new device that we use to treat brain aneurysms that are wide-necked, meaning they're uh, like a bigger neck coming off the blood vessel. Okay. And instead of a clip, what we do is we go into the aneurysm itself and expand a device which is made up of metal wires that plugs up the aneurysm from the inside. Okay, so we have some video showing right now that's giving people an example of what that looks like. So how does it all work? So we go in with a catheter from the artery in the leg or the artery in the wrist. We bring up a small microcatheter all the way up to the brain aneurysm. Wow. And then we expand the device inside the aneurysm. And I think when people think about, you know, an aneurysm in their brain, when they think of that, they think of those surgeries where you have to cut open the skull and go into the brain that way that's super invasive, but is this surgery less invasive that way because you're going in through, you know, a vein in the arm or the leg? Right. So this surgery definitely is much, much less invasive. The recovery time or the downtime after this kind of procedure is maybe a day, maybe two days wow. versus compared to seven to 14 days after an open surgery. And you brought an example here on right. the table to show us as well. So what are we looking at here? So this is a brain aneurysm that's uh, kind of in the back part of the brain, one of the most difficult blood vessels to get mm -hmm. into uh, open surgically. And that's a wide neck aneurysm right at the top. So this just shows how the devices you know, open up right inside of that brain aneurysm. And this is just another example of the same device where if you just push it out gently, it kind of flowers out and then becomes into this ball that would just fit into the aneurysm. And so that will kind of plug it and Correct. stop it from creating further damage? Right, so it works like a cork like a wine bottle. If you have a wine bottle, you're just going to cork it from the top. This corks it from the inside. And how have you seen this helping people? Yeah, so we're, we've uh, essentially, you know, started treating patients this year with this device. Uh, you know, we've treated, we're the only center in Arkansas that has treated patients using this device. And, you know, majority of our patients have been very happy. They've gone home the same day or the next day. I wouldn't say the same day, the next day after the procedure without any major morbidity or any issues. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Um, and how do you know if people are a candidate for this type of surgery? Sure, so uh, 
a lot of patients would have some sort of imaging prior mm -hmm. to uh, being considered for this device. Uh, we would have to look at the aneurysm on any kind of an imaging modality that's been done before, like a CT scan would die or some other test. And if they have a wide neck aneurysm that's at a bifurcation location, meaning mm -hmm. branching point of two vessels and a wide neck, they would be a good candidate for this procedure. And as far as the advancements in technology for medical procedures, is this considered one of those big advancements? It is. It definitely is because this uh, gold standard wise, you know, you have to go in and do an open surgery for these patients. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a less invasive um, option with very, very low complication risks. Yeah. Are there still risks associated with it, though? Sure. Any kind of procedure involving brain aneurysms has a small risk to it. But in the trial, out of all the patients that were studied, only one patient had a complication. And, you know, when we're talking about risk of surgery, let's just talk about risk factors in general for, for aneurysms. What can people look out for? Maybe, you know, an aneurysm, like you said, can just happen to someone. Right. But what can people look out for to know they might be at risk of having an aneurysm? So majority of aneurysms are incidental like I said but sometimes aneurysms may be associated with symptoms like headaches mm -hmm. which can occur commonly uh, but if you have a family history of aneurysms and you have headaches that may be someone that may want to get checked out for brain aneurysms because those are patients that potentially have a brain aneurysm because of their family history. The other risk factors are smoking which is a very big risk factor, blood pressure and there's a small association with cholesterol as well. And are there symptoms if, if someone knows, oh my goodness, I might be having, you know, an aneurysm? Sure. So the most, most common symptom somebody has is the worst headache of their life. Yeah. Essentially, it's, I've never had this kind of headache. This is the worst 11 out of 10. Uh, those are the patients that should immediately go to the emergency room to get checked out for some kind of aneurysmal bleeding. Well, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Where can people get more information about the surgery or about what you guys do at Baptist? So uh, our Baptist helpline should be able to help them with any kind of information with the surgery. Um, our Baptist uh, you know, Information Center should also be able to provide them with more information. Well, amazing technology that you guys have going on, of course. Great that in Arkansas you guys have the capabilities of doing this surgery with Baptist. Thank you so much, Dr. Dharmakari, for being here with us. We appreciate you so much.